let me ask for um for therapy for advice mm. uh for wisdom in uh returning to eric weinstein and maybe give some guidance to understanding his view on um his attempt at a theory of everything that he calls geometric unity that mm -hmm. he told me that you may have some inkling of an under understanding of. If you were to describe his theory to aliens that visited Earth, <laughs> uh, how would you do it? Or you could try if it was just me visiting Earth. Uh, how would you describe it, your best understanding of it? He, he shared with me some of it. Uh, when I was in New York at Columbia, like uh, 11 years ago, we actually spent a lot of time where he explained to me, and I found it beautiful. He has a very um, original idea at the, at the core of it, where you have this, instead of four-dimensional, instead of 10-dimensional, he has 14-dimensional mm -hmm. space. And I thought it was, it was really original, and this is exactly goes to the point I made earlier, that we need new ideas. I feel that without some uh, fundamentally new idea, we won't be able to get closer to understanding our universe. Now, I have a problem with the whole idea of theory of everything. You know, I don't believe that one exists, nor nor that we should um, aim to construct one. And I think it's it's really um, uh, not to offend anybody, but it's ultimately a fault of education system of physicists. Like in mathematics, we do not, we're not brought up, we're not educated as mathematicians with the idea that one day we will come up with the theory of everything. Even though, as a joke, I said that Langland's program is mathematical theory of everything. But I meant it's kind of a tongue in cheek. But isn't it a little bit kind of that? It's not really, because first of all, it doesn't cover all fields of mathematics and it covers specific phenomena. But isn't it spiritually striving? towards the same platonic form of the theory of everything. <laughs> like connecting, I, I, I connecting. Connecting, fields. but connecting doesn't mean that it Unifying. covers everything, right? So you could connect two things and then you have a, a, infinitely many other things which are uh, outside of the purview of this connection. That's how it is in mathematics, I, I, I feel. And I would venture to say that most mathematicians look at it this way. Like there is no idea that somehow, I think it's actually impossible because we're not talking about such a thing as like one universe. We're talking about all possible universes of all possible dimensions and so on. It is just not feasible to have a unified, unify everything in one equation. Now, physicists on the other hand, have been brought up, educated for decades with this idea. And to me, and I, I am not sure I should say that, but I feel like it's like a kind of an ultimate ego trip. So that I have come up with the unified. I have found the unified theory of everything. It's me, and it's, my name will be on it. I think a lot of physicists get educated this way, especially men take it seriously. Yeah. And I've seen that happen, and I think it is counterproductive. I think that it, a lot of people agree that this, this debate is kind of, I feel like it's kind of settled. I think I, I hear it less and less, but so, I disagree with the whole premise. So you... Uh... It's interesting because because both are interesting points you made, which is you don't think a theory of everything exists, and you don't think the pursuit of a theory of everything is good. So I think you spoke to the second thing, which is basically uh, that the pursuit of a theory of everything becomes like a drug to the human ego. That's right. So it, it is a huge motivating factor. I don't deny that, but I feel that it's there are better ways to motivate people than like that, then this way, okay? So um, I would say, for instance, if one, because th then it's not a game of winner takes all in some sense. And in fairness, when physicists say theory of everything, or grand unified theory, they mean something very specific, which is unifying the standard model and Einstein's relativity theory, which is the theory of gravity. So they don't necessarily, like a lot of physicists may say these words, but they don't really mean them. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to realize that, that in my opinion, that's not productive and it's not feasible anyway. So having said that, there are some theories are better than others, obviously. So for instance, Eric's theory has, uh, as far as I understand, does have uh, a certain way of producing some of the elementary particles that we see and as well as the force of gravity. So it does have that promise. I feel that for, at least from the place where I had seen it, 
about 10 years ago, it still required a lot of work to get to the point of actually saying that it does work because, you know, a lot of, there are a lot of elements. It's a, uh, it's a huge enterprise to have a theory because you have just to describe the field, sort of the, the, ba the building blocks of the theory. It's already a tremendous undertaking. And he's trying to do it for, for curved spaces in greater generality, which is what makes it so unique and so beautiful. But then there are, on top of that, there are all this issue of quantization, of actually describing them as quantum field theory. And the quantum field theory, even as a language, as a framework, is currently incomplete, in my opinion. And not only my opinion, it's like everybody's, uh, it's, uh, everybody agrees on that, that it's a, it's, a, it's a collection of tricks, so to speak. It's a collection of tools. It's a toolbox, but it is not uh, a, 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 a consistent, uh, rigorous theory like number theory mm -hmm. uh, in mathematics. Physicists has still, have still been able to derive predictions uh, from it by, and um, confirm them with, to great accuracy. But the underpinnings, the, 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 it doesn't have the real rigorous foundation from mathematical perspective. So in that sense, even if in that framework, a new theory could um, lead to an explanation of some, some new explanation of some phenomena, it would still be incomplete in a sense because it wouldn't be mathematically rigorous, you see what I mean? Because the whole framework is not yet on, on a firm foundation. So it's not consistent. I, why is it that the universe should have, so that's to your first point, do you think the universe has a beautiful, clean, when you show up and meet God and there's one equation on the board, and the two of you just chuckle. <laughs> Do you think such equation exists? Yeah, there are, there are such equations. For instance, let's say I am interested in a particular question, right? So in the language program, say, so uh, mo moving away from physics, so let's talk about math. So in, in the context of language program, I have recently developed with my co-authors I think of and cash done, and kind of a new fr uh, strand, a new flavor of the language program, if you will. But so far, it's a sort of, it's a vision. It's a set of conjectures, which we have proved in some cases, but not in full generality. So yes, I would like to, to use your framework, for me, the creator, mm -hmm. and ask her, <laughs> what is the explanation of this? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it may well be that she will answer in a way that I will, I will just burst out laughing. It's like, how could we not see it? Mm -hmm. You see? So that I totally see. But I don't see one equation governing one, one equation governing them all. Not one equation to govern them all, but it does seem that such equations exist where she will tell you something and you look back and say, how could I not see it? It seems like the, the truth at the end of the day is simple that we're seeking, especially through mathematics. Mm -hmm. It seems somehow simple. The, the the nature of reality, the thing that governs it seems to be simple. I wonder why that is. And I also wonder if it's not totally incorrect and we're just craving the simplicity. And then mixing into the whole conversation about how much the observer that craves simplicity is part of the answer. Mm. <laughs> It's a whole big giant mess, or a whole a whole big beautiful painting, or symphony. 